Okay, MMA Weekly is here in the house. My uh, cohort in crime, Jake Hatton. And we got a special guest today, Guy Mesger, OG in the sport. I, I, <laughs> I've really been uh, excited to talk to you and, uh, and hear some of the stories and the things that you're, uh, the new things that you have going on uh, with the sport. Um, but uh, how, how are you doing in these... How are you doing well, in these I'm COVID saying, days? We probably, want to stick with, we probably want to stick with the new stuff because some of the old stuff I used to do with Boss, I don't know if the statute of limitations are up, so we might not be able to talk too much about it. Well, the good thing here is nobody's watching or listening, so we're good. <laughs> we won't tell All a right, soul. Well, in that case, guys, it was good interviews. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, you, you've been around forever, and uh, yeah. UFC 4 was your first first event yeah. and, and that was your first was that your first fight uh whether it was a pro fight or not or how how, how did how did you get started no, in yeah. this okay well it started in the ufc in in uh, mma uh, well well okay so this is how it worked is that uh i was a uh you know up and coming kickboxer and boxer in the southeast area it's, you know mostly southwest southeast area of the u.s mostly you know I fought a lot to uh, Dallas, Oklahoma, uh, in Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, places like that. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of accolades, you know, I, mean, I was like world kickboxing. Well, I was number one rated kickboxer at the time. And I was a world full contact karate champion. I was an undefeated boxer. So I had all these like cool accolades and everything. But, you know, I'm 25 years old and I had no money. And, uh, and um, so, you know, I was getting to a point where like, I have to get real with my life here. You know, I got to figure out what's going on. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I, I watched the UFC and I think like everybody, they thought it was fake. I thought it was a pro wrestling gig. You know, I was, I was waiting for it to be something really stupid or something like that. And, uh, and uh, so I'm sitting there and, you know, uh, watching this thing. I'm like, yeah. And then I see, you know, trying to kick Tula's tooth off. And I think there was a collective, gasp and i think everybody in their mind basically said oh shit i can say that right in this <laughs> yeah this, this stuff's real and and they, they said oh shit this is real and and i remember going after watching it i remember going man i can i can win this thing because you know i, I what, what, what i noticed in the early days is guys were very one-dimensional right they you know the only guys that had like any kind of real multi-dimension was you know there was like there was always like one guy who had a little bit of wrestling skills that was like a karate guy you know i did pretty good right and uh but there was nobody that really besides like ken shamrock who you know uh had a good versatility in submission and stand up and, and um you know of course hoist gracie you know he was just basically a submission guy and and he's the only one who had any kind of real experience at this kind of no rule stuff so i think everyone was a little kind of didn't know how to train for it you know but ken had a better idea because of pancreas pancreas had 30 minute time limits so you know it, it kind of prepped you a little bit better for it then it was kick punch wrestling and so, you know, I saw it now, you know, I was, I was, a, uh, you know, like I said, at the time uh, I was, I was the number one rated kickboxer in the world at heavyweight. I was undefeated boxer. I was world full contact karate champion. And, um, and I also, uh, was a national level judo player and, and I was, a uh, you know, and, and wrestling, even though I didn't have a huge amount of wrestling accolades, I was, you know, I was three times state champion in high school. I was a all American. I wrestled, um, Southern Illinois, Edwardsville. So, you know, I had, I had a, 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 a diverse background and I was actually really pretty good at the different arts too, you know I mean? Uh, uh, it, it's, you know, except for wrestling. Wrestling is the only one I didn't have kind of like real national recognition in. And um, anyway, so um, I saw it and I go, you know what? This is a great time for me to call it quits. I said, there, I'm going to fight in this tournament, no rules. The, you know, And you're first, this was your first... MMA fight, you have, huh? this was your first MMA fight. You hadn't had any, uh, yeah, you yeah. know. You got to remember, it was no holds barred back then. Yeah. Because uh, there were no rules. I mean, they had rules in the first one. They had no eye gouging and no biting. And, or, no eye gouging, no hicking to the groin. That's right. And uh, and they called out all the clown martial artists, you know, the Seagals and all those guys and, and Dillman and those clowns. And they were like, <laughs> well, you know. You can't. You, it's not really, really no, no holds barred because you can't eye gouge or kick in the groin. And I'm thinking, 
if your only system consists of kicking people in the nuts and poking them <laughs> in the eye, you got a pretty freaking weak system. And, uh, Sign so, me up. No. <laughs> so, so I was like, going, yeah, so let's go ahead and like, take those in there and let's see how well they do. So that's exactly what they did. UFC 2, no rules. And so... What you know, was that like backstage when you got there and you're like the first time you're there backstage and seeing everything going on? What what was that experience like? Well, I went to UFC 3 first. So I, I kind of got, got my feet wet in the fact that they wanted me to go do this. But I was like, you know, I got to check this out. And Were you honestly, there as a backup? Were you there as no, a backup or there. cornering? No, no, they just flew me out there because what they because we got to remember the old old UFC really wasn't fighter against fighter. It was really style against style. What they were doing trying to prove out styles. You know, it was at first it was a great marketing campaign for the Gracie Jiu Jitsu is what it was, and um, and so um, you know, and it did a great job. Let's face it, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was unheard of, and now everybody's doing it. You know, in fact, there's three things that you'll you'll find out about somebody within five seconds, even if you don't ask. One of them is they'll, they'll volunteer to tell you that they're a blue belt in jujitsu. <laughs> uh, they do CrossFit or they're a vegan. <laughs> so true. <laughs> without uh, ever asking the question, without ever actually really giving a shit, they're going to let you know. And so, you know, it went from, you know, it went from a, this obscure, you know, a sport or not even sport, martial art to, you know, you know, obviously, probably the most, you know, it's, it's, it's probably eclipsed jujitsu, uh, judo by now. And, and, um, and talking about the Gracies, the Lions Den, and I'd like to find out how, how you got started in the Lions Den, because besides sure. the Gracie family, the Lions Den was pretty much the premier training uh, place to go before there, yeah. there were groups. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. It, they were. I mean, Ken... Uh, Ken originally started the Lions Den to uh, feed uh, athletes to Pancrase. And then UFC came along. And uh, then so now there was Pancrase and UFC uh, for his athletes. So, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, so really what, the reason I, 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 I went to Lions Den was, um, I, like I said, I had a lot of fight experience, you know, I mean, you know, when you add up how many matches I've had, I like I wrestled since I was eight years old. You know, wow. I mean, I've had thousands of wrestling bouts. You know, I've had hundreds of judo matches and sambo matches and you know karate matches. I couldn't even tell you how many. I mean, you know, and uh, you know, I had 40, 43 full contact karate matches. You know, so I had over sixty something bouts when I'm stepping into the UFC. And when you're talking backstage, okay, so I'm backstage, and you know how they're doing the interviews and. And you remember how cheesy the, the, the old interviews were. I, you know, I can't wait to UFC 3. I get to get in there and show everybody, you know, what a badass I am. And, like, yeah. and the other guy goes, you know, who, who acts like the humble monk. I'm here to prove my style for my master to show that he, that our system is superior. <laughs> you know, it's all kind of shit like that, right? And I'm like freaking out because I haven't slept good since I agreed to do this shit. And I'm like going, oh, my God. So they're interviewing me and they go, are you, uh, it's how you feel. And I said, I'll tell you, to be honest, I don't feel that good. I don't know how these guys are all so hyped up about this because I said, I've had over 60 professional fights. God knows how many amateur fights. And I said, since I agreed to do this, I haven't put three hours of sleep together. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm a little disturbed about it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so everyone else is like, and it was so funny because the entire crew literally got quiet. And they're looking at me and they're like, and they, they like me because, they met most of them met me from UFC three and I, and you know and I kind of you know was charming and everything so uh, <laughs> I think what like what but they they literally they they, they say pull me aside and, and uh, Kathy Davis I think it was her name and she goes guy listen you don't have to do this you you do realize you don't have to do this. <laughs> you know? and, and nobody's gonna say anything about it if you don't I started laughing. <laughs> I was like, I appreciate that, but this nice guy act stops the moment I step into that cage. Don't worry about me. Worry about him. And uh, you know, and but but yeah. So and, it, it was it was an interesting you know, and that's different dynamic because it really wasn't it really wasn't a sport back then. It was a spectacle, and you know, and and, and so you know, it, it, there was a lot of spectacle stuff going on. I mean, UFC three. You know, when Chemo came running back into the ring like this. All, all the Gracie uh, uh, clan were planning to beat up all the Huntington Beach guys. And I'm like, I'm sitting there listening and plan this. I'm like going, 
uh, are you guys serious? Y'all like adults and you're talking like you're about to get in a third grade scrap after school. This is like, I said, I said, first of all, most of you guys, most of you guys, I'm going to say most of y'all are going to look, look Hispanic. And I said, and you're, you're in Charlotte, North Carolina. They're going to shoot you first before they shoot the white boy. So you're going to be in trouble. All right? so, and that's how it was. It was. I said, and there's a good chance, man, somebody's going to get hurt. All right. So, and it won't be the guys you think it is. And so. It was just insane, right? So all this crazy stuff's going on. And so it, I, originally, I, I, I didn't like that. I, I like being a sportsman, you know, because of my personal uh, spiritual beliefs. I've always had kind of a tough time hurting people for money, you know, and which is strange because I'm kind of good at it. But um, <laughs> I know it's weird. It's, isn't that weird how you get these weird dichotomies? Right your, 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 your life journey has been how to submit and take somebody out. <laughs> Well, now, so here the interesting thing is now, now I'm a doctor. So it's the other way. Now, now I'm, I, I, my yin and yang is uh, I'm, I'm helping put people back together. That's true. Uh, so, but anyways, so that's how, that, that, that was my experience uh, in UFC uh, three and four when we went there. And, and there was, a, you know, there wasn't a lot of co uh, control because of the boxing commissions and there wasn't have a huge amount of control over it like they do now. So th it was, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it, there was a kind of a Wild West feel to it, you know, kind of like, a, you know, you know, uh, OK Corral, you know, you, you know, there, there were times when you were uncomfortable w walking around certain groups because you were by yourself. And it was like, you know, you know, there'd be like five guys from those group and I'll give you the stink guy. And you're like, of course, me, I'm, I'm a smart ass. And, you know, probably would have got my ass kicked if I, if I didn't, uh, you know, if I wasn't uh, at least backed up by some of my boys. And, now. Uh, the lions dan how did how did that come about with you with can approaching you because they had already been going like you said they were feeding uh pancreas well, and they, yeah they basically just started though so the, the ken, ken had just started that program he had like two or three guys that were going but he, you know the idea of putting together an actual team and a train you know became um really it was more uh when i joined the gym and um uh and when i joined was um well to be honest i lived in dallas and I met Ken at uh, UFC three. I met Bob and uh, Bob Shamrock, Ken's uh, uh, father, and uh, Frank Shamrock, and um, and Ken. And basically, I, I basically said, I was honest with them. I go, listen, I've had a ton of fights and stuff, but I never fought in this kind of thing, right? I never fought where there are no rules, and because uh, guys got to remember, the referee couldn't stop the fight back then. Right. I mean, the only way to stop the fight was if you were knocked out. You tapped out, you verbally tapped out, or your corner threw in the towel, right? And so I know me, and I won't quit. I mean, my arm looks like this because I let Fanaki break my arm to get wow. out of the hole, right? All right? Now, that wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. I will admit that. But, <laughs> you know, that's how bad I want to win. So here I am thinking I'm going to be underneath somebody possibly. They're pounding my skull and I'm going to be too stupid to ta tap out. So I, there's a good chance I'm going to freaking die out here. So if, if I'm on the losing end of this thing, I might die. So yeah, it kept me up at night. And, uh, and so, you know, when I, 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 and I was honest with them, I said, listen, I just got to know if I'm going to get hurt or not, man. I, I, you know, I've got better things to do than be killed on pay-per-view TV. And, and so I would love for you guys to come in and assess my skills. And they, they agreed to it. And so um, I, basically what happened was, uh, it was, uh, I guess, end of, December, end of November or, or part of December. I don't remember. I think it was one or two. It was basically two weeks before uh, the fight or, or three weeks before the fight. And I, and I just, uh, you know, basically what happened was I, I sat that Saturday night. I had a, a kickboxing fight. I, I defended uh, my, the, the title and knocked this guy out in the first or second round and jumped on the plane the very next day, flew out to Ken's. And uh, and basically, uh, you know, started talking to them about what was going on, and and basically, Ken goes, well, you know, we we we'd like you to try out for the thing, you know, we don't really train guys outside of our group, so you know, if you want to try out for the team, and you know, normally I put together my own team, like my kickboxing team is, I put that together because mm -hmm. there wasn't anything there, and, and to be honest, I'm kind of a control freak anyway, so you know, I had to, and. Uh, it was the first team, you know, because I wanted guys surrounding me that wanted to win as bad as I did. I mean, I want to win so bad. It's, it's. I should probably be talking to a psychiatrist, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, because I, I like that. I, my, my worry is that I'm going to pollute my children with the same kind of stuff, you know. So, uh, you know, believe me, I, I can just imagine that them in counseling 20 years later. My father was so obsessed with winning. 
What what kind of a meat grinder was the lion's den? What do you have like a story of like oh my gosh I can't believe my tryouts suck, you know? So Ken asked me if I try out. I'm like yeah, you know. I mean I did an old school Texas black belt test, right? And there ain't nothing worse than that, dude. That's just a freaking beat down. They beat you down because there ain't no winning it. You know, right. there ain't no winning the test. They beat you down until you can't take no more, and it's how well you lose that makes you how tough a black belt you are. So basically nothing really ever scared me, right, you know, when it came to fighting because I, I survived that shit. I'm like going, nobody goes through this stuff without getting killed, right? And believe me, I thought I was going to die on my black belt test. So when you, you think you're going to die and you still keep going, you kind of surrender a lot of stuff, fear after that, that you ain't worried about a simple match like this. And so, you know, so I was like, yeah, man, I was, I was like, all right, how tough can it be, right, you know? And so, um, you know, so I said, yeah, sure, let's do it. I figured it would be fighting and stuff. And I, you know, and I kind of, you know, I was, I learned to kind of keep, you know, res, things in reserve. Ken asked me about my experience. I say I wrestled and I, you know, I said, but I'm basically known for my kickboxing and, and I could see Ken write it off. He's a kickboxer. He didn't really want to hear anything else. So I didn't tell him <laughs> anything else. I didn't tell him that I was actually an AA all American wrestler. I was a college wrestler. I was also a national level judo player, but so he didn't ask, I didn't, I didn't tell. And then since so, I figured, you know, I'd be fighting some guy, I'd rather I'm underestimating me a little bit anyways. But we didn't start off fighting. What we started off with is 500 Hindu squats, which, by the way, 100 Hindu squats suck, let alone 500 of them. And, uh, and so I'm sitting there going, 500, huh? <laughs> uh, How many so days? I, off. I went to the guy that was helping me, you know, that was you know, doing my counting, the guy who was right, right there. I went, he said 500, right? He goes, yeah. I went, and you did this? And he goes, yeah. I said, okay. Boom, I started going. Oh my God, my legs were blown up. And uh, so I did the 500 squats and then I was like, all right, what's next? He goes, 500 leg lifts. I went, you gotta be kidding me. All right, 500 <laughs> leg lifts, right? Then I had to do 500 sit-ups. Now, and I'm like, okay, my legs are fried. My gut's fried. Now I gotta do 500 sit-ups. I'm like, all right. So I said, good, hold my feet. So I get here like this, and I just start going. I'm just ripping them out. Boom, 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 boom. I'm ripping out. I can't. I do so many. I'm like, I, my stomach's about to explode. I'm leaving. Going, ah! I said, Oh my God, how many I get? He goes, Thirty. I go, What? Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no way. That's thirty. That's like, no way. That was like 150. Give me a break. I said, I want a new counter. I want somebody new to count. And uh, anyway, so I got through that, and then I had to do 200 push-ups, and then I had to do. Uh, and then we had to run for a mile and a half. You had to get that in, uh, I think, 15 minutes or 16 minutes, something like that, which, um, uh, which you know, was not a problem. I just jogged that, you know, and, and pretty much. I remember the trainer was like, you got to hurry up. I'm like, he didn't realize I had a watch. I'm like, no, I'm all right. <laughs> you're going to fail you. I go, I go, you're not going to. You're not big enough. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm fine. So I get there, and then, and then they tell me I have to fight for 15 minutes. I was going to fight Vernon, right, for 15 minutes. I'm like, all right, cool. And it was, uh, you know, basically it was kind of UFC, you know, slash Panker style with open hand, you know, but it was full contact. And uh, I was like, all right, let's do it. And, uh, you know, and to be honest, uh, you know, I, they underestimated me. And I basically, uh, you know, uh, had the upper hand the entire time with Vernon. And the problem was, is that there was a clock in the way back. And so I'm looking at the clock and I, and I, I like, at the time, Vernon wasn't a real good wrestler, and I obviously was. So I'd take Vernon down, I'd get on top of him and hold him down, go for submission or slap, you know, stuff like that. And um, I kept looking up the clock, and it was like 20 after. I'm like, I'm five minutes past that 15. Do I say something to him at this point because I'm fucking dying? And uh, <laughs> he literally went 40 minutes. Whoa. I shit you not. I'm not exaggerating. 40 minutes. And he finally stopped, and I'm like... I, I was like, I guess I wasn't supposed to say something. I'm glad I didn't. But uh, wow, you know. But anyway, so that was my test. So it, it was grueling. And um, in fact, I was so beat up after the test. It took me two days to actually train for the fight because I was so sore from 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 the tryout. You know? That is that's insane. That's what you know when you look at what the lion's den was like back then, and 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 yeah. the training you had. And you compare it to now, today's fighter. What percentage would you put in the a lion's den fighter, a premier, uh, no holds barred slash MMA fighter, 
as far as percentage of that made up your DNA was skill, athleticism, and just being pure badass. What would you say that compared to today's fighter? All right, well, that's okay. That, that's a tough one, and I'll tell you why. It's a tough one because there, there are athletes today that fight for the spirit of the game, okay? So the spirit of every fight should be you finish the fight. Now, whether it's submission, knockout, whatever. And the old school UFC, there was, you know, there weren't decisions and it kept going until somebody quit or got beat up or knocked out, right? So what it did is it, it, it was a true, you know, it amplified what, you know, combat athletics was really supposed to be about, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think the main difference is, is not the fact that the athletes are any better or worse. Uh, what it is, is that they, they it's developed into a sport. And some of these guys don't, in my opinion, they just go for the decision. You know, they'll, 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 they'll be like, they'll, they'll, they'll slap box each other a little bit on the outside. They'll kick at each other a little bit. And then the guy will take him down, ride him, and knows that he got the takedown. And he's on top of him a little bit. He'll win the round. He'll do that for, uh, you know, three rounds, and he wins the round, right? And he wins the fight. So, I, I you know, I, I think that the main difference is, is that the – and, and why it was more stressful back then, because, you know, today's athlete is so much better versed and better prepared, you know, mm-hmm. you know than, 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 than we were back then. Because we didn't know. There wasn't a platform to yeah. train by. They have access to a lot of tools. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, how, you don't train for this shit, right? And then so, you know, so. You guys yeah. were creating the template. Exactly. And Ken did a really good job on that, actually, you know. And so, um, and, and I'm a systems guy, so. You know, once I got in my, in my brain, that's how I went, okay, I got this figured out. And, uh, and, you know, so I trained, you know, so I started training most of the guys. And, uh, and, 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 that, and that, that worked out. So I, I would say the main difference today is not the fact that the athletes are any better or any worse. I, I, you, know, the, you know, back in the old day, they, they had some clowns. They had like the Kung Fu, killer Kung Fu guys. You know, that one guy look, actually looked like Kung Fu Panda. And then a couple of other guys, you know. Uh, and, and so, yeah, th- those guys wouldn't even get a look today, you know. But, you know, listen, Mark Coleman would still be a champion today as he was back then. You know, the difference is he'd just be a little bit more work, well-versed. You know, uh, Mark Kerr would still be, you know, crushing people. You know, all, all those guys from way back in the day would still be doing really well. It would just they would just be doing it a little bit differently, and and that's really the difference. I think the difference is is not that the guys were tougher. Things is is as much as it was that it was just a different sport. You know, it was a different activity, and 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 I don't think one is better than the other. I mean, personally, like I said for myself, I like the idea of being a sportsman, right? You know, more so than 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 um, you know. I mean, it's kind of cool to say, because uh, I, I I fought in a bunch of different other things like that. I had like eighteen no holds, you know, no holds barred matches. You know what I mean? And it's kind of cool to be able to, yeah, yeah. I fought one of those gladiatorial things, <laughs> the it, tournaments, which they don't. They, yeah, tournaments. I said, guys, today they got it so easy, it's ridiculous. And the reality is, it's not easy. It's just different. Yeah, you well, know, when you it's a total- you won, was it UFC thirteen or fourteen? When you won that. 13. They call it a lightweight tournament, <laughs> but yeah. it was two hundred pounds and yeah. under. But weren't yeah, you? Light heavyweights. I mean, that's what they. That's what they. It's funny because lightweight tournament. But then sometimes I'll see light heavyweight, and I'm like, I kind of like that sounding better. Because, but um, but yeah, it was, it was basically lightweight and heavyweight. That was it. Yeah, and you weren't you injured uh, before you fought Tito for the final fight in that in that tournament? Yeah, I broke my hand. Yeah, I broke my hand on your head. On whose head? Uh, Linengers, and he, <laughs> this dude, I'll tell you something about that guy. And he's a really nice guy and everything. But that dude had the luck of the gods, man. I would sit there and flare up and have a shot. I'd be like throwing a straight right hand down the pipe. In the very last second, he duck, duck, I hit him in the forehead. I'd be like, I'd be like three times. I was like, I was like, and then and at one point, I broke my hand on his head. I don't even remember. And uh, how do you even pull through that, knowing? Because it, you got another fight. How do you even just keep going? Because uh, let's let's be honest. Uh, probably half the fighters would probably in that situation today probably would, you know, pull out if they were injured like that. I mean, and you can't blame yeah, them. Uh, yeah, uh, believe me, I would have. I, I was considering pulling out too, um, but I did owe twenty thousand dollars to the tax man, so that was a motive. <laughs> 
but that helps. Also, also to be honest, it, it, and this was a weird. This was actually kind of an interesting um, dynamic to, to, to that was different. Is that most of the time when I fought, I'll be honest, I fought for myself. You know, I mean, my my self esteem growing up as a kid was wrapped up in athletics, and I was a good. And you know, I mean. I, I mean, as a freshman, I lived in the state of Washington. There was one of three freshmen that were, were all district uh, athletes. I was one of them. You know, I, I was a freshman. I was a four sport letterman. It's interesting. I didn't letter in wrestling, which is the sport I went to college on. But <laughs> but I, I lettered in swimming. I lettered in football. I lettered in baseball. And I lettered in track, right? Wow. Athletics was important to me because it's funny. Everyone in my family, my brothers and my mother, uh, and even my father, are either uh, – part of a, a society called Mensa or they've had invitations to, and it's, it's a society of people that have h- higher than 150 IQs and uh, basically genius level people. I'm, I didn't get an invitation. Let's put it out. <laughs> and uh, so, so, you know, so like my mom would be like, this is John Ken national honor roll society. And this is guy he's athletic. And uh, <laughs> so it, it kind of, it kind of pin- pigeonholed me into the fact that I, I you know, that my self esteem was, built on being an athlete. So here I am. Most of my fighting was about me developing myself as a person to feel good about myself, to feel important, all these other things that, 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 you know, people do for their self-esteem. And so I'm sitting there and I had to make a big decision. If I take this fight, the next one, because we had to cut the glove off my hand because, um, it swelled up so bad underneath there. Right. And I, we couldn't get it off without it really hurt so we just cut it off and um and i'm looking around at the guys and you gotta understand something this is probably the my 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 fight was the last time i i can remember that everybody from the lions then dallas and uh lions then south and then lodi lined in they all came together to help me get ready for this fight i mean everybody did wow and it was an amazing camp the camaraderie ship was amazing. And to this day, there, there's a song by OMC, uh, uh, How Bizarre. And it was a popular song. Right, I remember. Every time I hear it, you know, I have it on my iPad. Every time I hear it, it brings back those memories because it was an amazing time. And I, I was looking at the guys and, and I could just, everyone's looks, they see the disappointment, you know, because they realize I'm probably not going to, comp- you know, go on. My hand's broken. And, and so... Frank was walking over to tell them that I, I was done, and I, I was like, "Nah, dude, I can do this. <laughs> I, I can." Tell I, I fought with a broken foot before I brought, you know, I fought with some injuries, and I, and I was like, "Yeah, I can do this," because I didn't want to let the guys down. And, wow. Uh, it was it was the first time that I, I literally fought for somebody else, you know, uh, and not my, and not my own, you know, like my own kind of gratification or my own grander education, I should say, and. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, it goes down as one of my best wins because I didn't do it for myself. I really felt like I did it for my teammates because of all the energy that they put into to making me successful and doing stuff like that. And I just didn't feel like I could let them down. And th- that brings a lot of power to your soul when you do this, when, when, you, when you take a, an approach like that. And it's probably why I won. What, how, but, how is it like that uh, a moment like that uh, affect the rest of your career and not only that, but just your life? you know, having that experience and, and, and a breakthrough like that with, uh, well, it, it, it changes you. I'll be, be honest. It changes you. It, my, my attitude, uh, has been ever since then, it, it has always been a little bit different because of that. And, um, and so, you know, you, you do what you, I don't know, man. It's just like, I started seeing things other ways. And to be honest, I became a much better instructor. I became, you know, I always had a good Gemma, you know, and it, 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 it changed me on a level where I always wanted my students to win. And we wanted everything. Well, if we did karate tournaments, we won. We did, you know, when we started kickboxing, we won, right? It didn't matter what it was. You know, we put our minds to it, we win. But I realized that I was also doing it for my own ego, right? Because when they won, Guy Mesger won. And Guy Mesger trains all these people. And then it, I, I think at that point, I realized that it's not about me, you know, the, the wins aren't, you know, and uh, the losses are more about me than the wins. And um, and I became a much better instructor. I came a, became a much more empathetic instructor when it came to my athletes that competed, you know, in the full context of. Right. And I was much more empathetic and much more uh, 
uh, I was much more dedicated to their success than I was dedicated to uh, my own success through them. And I, something that's carried on with me, you know, even to this day. And that fight was was one of the biggest upsets, not in terms of where Tito was at or you were at in your careers, but just pulling it out like that with that situation and 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 winning the fight. And then it, it went on to become one of the part of one of the biggest rivalries in MMA between Lions yeah. Dan and, and, and Ortiz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, crazy things are born from crazy situations, right? <laughs> now, Pancrase, uh, tell us about Japan going over there fighting. You became, you fought one of the biggest Japanese legends, Funaki. And, you know, a lot of today's MMA fans aren't going to have a clue about Funaki. I lived in Japan for five years covering Pride back in the day, but not that early. Uh, you know, you beat a legend over there in Pancrase, became became a, a champion uh, to add to this. I, I, always, I always look at beating Funaki as my best win. It, it wasn't one of the more exciting fights, but it, it was one of the fights that I absolutely outsmarted him. And because um, Fanaki is unbelievably gifted and he's smart and he is, he's like me he, in the fact, <laughs> not that I'm so smart. But <laughs> he's like me well, come that. on, you got your PhD, so let's not yeah. discount that. Well, well, okay, well, you'd be surprised how many stupid people get PhDs. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, uh, but, 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 but really, what is like, I'm a real student of martial arts. Like I read everything about martial arts. I know just about every indigenous martial art from people all across the world. And why I have this information, I have no idea. It just fascinates me, right? And so when I get into it, I do it. So Fanaki's a master of that too. You know, he's a huge fan of Bruce Lee. He was studying the Jeet Kune Do system about doing the stuff like, you know, the way, you know, but he was making it, you know, Fanaki style like that. And um, he was uh, amazingly skilled and smart and those are dangerous guys to fight in fact he broke my leg he, he put a i had a three-inch spiral fracture in my shin the first time i fought him wow. and uh and uh and he broke my arm the second time so Jeez. i did not feel bad about beating the shit out of him for the 30 minutes of that last time because um you know like i said i got i got this wonderful arm because of him but and that was from what he kick your arm and break it during that no, last arm fight arm. he arm okay he arm Oh, yeah. from that, the first fight. No, that's from the second fight. He beat from me the second bar. fight, and you pulled out. Oh. He beat me by leg lock the first fight, arm bar the second fight. Okay. And, and uh, it was the third fight that you beat him. Third fight, I beat him. Okay. Okay. Man. And it was fun. Pancrase was, uh, and, and you know, Pancrase was, uh, uh, it was an amazing time, you know. For, it, it actually re resurged my career. We were talking about my career being, a, you know, going nowhere. And, um, you know, so all of a sudden, you know, UFC four came along. Um, and the reason I didn't fight in the tournament was me and Anthony Macias flipped the coin and he won. So he went in the tournament. I was supposed to do UFC five, but Oleg Tatarov, who was living with me, had some, some, uh, uh, visa issues. So he, he fought in the main card. I fought in the, in, in as an alternate. And then, um, and then the UFC, then, uh, Pancrase called. And I always wanted to go to Japan. And then, so I went there and was successful. And, but then I got to fight every like six weeks. And, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. And, and I was making, you know, really good money. And so I was like, so I basically ended one career and started another one with Pancrase and, and Japan. And, um, it was a good time. I mean, you know, Pancrase was, you lived like a God there, man. I mean, holy smokes, man. It was, it was, a, it was a, a good time. Um, and um, Japan is a I, good time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, it, it's a little bit more uh, subdued than it was when in the '90s. And, like Rapungi in the '90s was like. <laughs> I mean, you could Rapungi is but, insane. Yeah, Jake, you've been so, over there in Japan too and fought, haven't you? Many times, and I remember a guy the first time I went to Rapungi. You know, and I live in Las Vegas, and that one Rapungi is something that I've. You have to you have to be there, like you said, especially back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Didn't the train yeah. stop yeah. at a certain like at midnight, and you had to stay overnight? Oh yeah, until about six in the morning. Hey, Amen, dude. dude. There were so many times we'd be, and of course the clubs didn't have any windows, right? And so, right. I, this, so I remember one time, 
if we're, we're having to go to UFC, the ultimate ultimate, right? So we're having to fly from Dallas, I mean, from Tokyo to Denver. And so we're like, all right, so we're out all night long. And I had the attention of a very, very beautiful French girl. And so <laughs> needless to say, I'm sitting there, you know, enthralled with this woman and talking and I kept, man, it's getting late. So I walk outside, it's still dark outside, walk back outside. And uh, I had enough to drink to think I could dance. I'm dancing with it. <laughs> it's like, man, it's getting late. Let's go outside. I walk upstairs and it's like the sun is out. I'm like, shit, we gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> I have to grab the guys and it's full swing. I mean, it's like seven and eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock in the morning, right? And we're and we we're we're in Shin Yokohama. It takes forever to get to Narita Airport. About an hour and a half. Plus trying to get to Shin Yokohama on a Sunday is a bitch too. So uh and so I'm sitting there going, holy shit. I'm grabbing the guys and we're literally running. We're like catching this subway, and then there's a fast food one that's going off this one. We're running. Now you got to stand. We've been drinking all night long, too. We've been fighting. I'm literally sweating alcohol out of my system. I smell so bad, I can smell myself. I'm sitting there, oh my God. And like, so we're running there, and man, and of course, we get there, and the handlers are sitting there going, Where are you guys doing? When I got no problem, I'm running there. Have you ever had one of those times when you take a shower? And you're still sweating after the shower, even though it was like you put it on stone cold, like cold shower, and you get up. That's the kind of diet I had, right? I'm out, took a five minute shower, all cold water, and I come out and I'm still sweating. That's how miserable my day was. All right, that's just kind of funny. We get the rare, we we leave, we go, we end up in LA. Of course, you know, you end up, you know, you end up the same day but earlier. And then right, right, but, yeah, Cause, yeah, ten uh, hour flight. Yeah, so I'm sitting there and. So we find. Uh, so we go to to, to the uh, uh, to, to the gate where we're going to get to Denver, right? And so it's me, Frank Shamrock, and Jason Delucia, I think, and maybe Vernon. Vernon was too, I think. And uh, yeah, Vernon was too. And so what we do is we're exhausted, you know, because again we've been I, and, and none of us could sleep on the flight for some reason. It was miserable, and you know, and I'm just miserable. And uh, so I go down there, you know, and of course it's like. So or so early, there's no flights going on, really going on. So, so what it does we we literally have an hour and a half before our flight takes off. So we go over to our gate, grab my bag, go to sleep. I wake up, a bunch of people around, no problem. Go back to sleep. Wake up, everybody's gone. They went on the flight and left, and they didn't wake us up. Oh, no. So we all wake up like shit. We missed the flight. So now, oh, so now we have to call. Uh, Tina, Ken's wife, uh, uh, his ex-wife, uh, wife at the time, and I said, you got to fig figure this out for us. So we literally had to take like five different connecting flights. <laughs> and we ain't sleeping. And this is after And hung years. over. Oh. And it was miserable. Miserable. And uh, yeah. So. And, it, and then you got to the fight with, with how much time? Two hours. Oh, uh, it's my. enough for me to get a shower, get something to eat, and go to the fights. And of course, instead of going to bed after that, of course, we decided that we we're going to probably party some more, which wasn't <laughs> a good idea. Because the next day, I, I don't know if you guys, how much y'all fly out of uh, Denver, but Denver shoots straight up. Jake's from Denver. I lived there many probably, years. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Fun, you know? And so I'm sitting there, my queasy stomach, because, you know, I've been drinking again like an idiot. And uh, this is why I don't drink anymore, right? These are the lessons that you learn. <laughs> And then, so we're starting to take off and we had a super bumpy flight, super bumpy flight. And so there's a kid in the seat, in the middle seat. I'm on the, I'm on the, on the uh, I'm, I'm behind him, but I'm on the aisle. He's in the middle seat and he's got the bulkhead. And he's like going, mommy, mommy. She goes, I'm not feeling well. She goes, it's okay, baby. Like this. Next thing you know, he starts projectile vomiting <laughs> and it's hitting the bulkhead and I'm behind him and I can smell it. And I'm sick to my stomach because I've been sick oh. no sleep for the last 48 hours. I'm like, oh my God. And the, and the plane is like this. And I get up <laughs> out of my seat and they're like, sir, you got to sit down. I go, no way. I'm like, I went back. I sat on the, I sat down with the uh, flight attendants on their, on their jump seats. No, you can't do it. I go, I'm not going back. You can have me arrested, but I'm going to start throwing up. That kid is like projectile vomiting. And I'm like, going this, I'm like going, okay, okay, just stay here. That's when social distancing is necessary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so, 
So that was my experience with UFC Ultimate <laughs> Ultimate. <laughs> vomiting and uh, hot chicks for pancreas, vomiting for the UFC. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you something. The exciting part about the pancreas, the movement now with the, what we're doing, is that, it, you know, really we're bringing back, uh, you know, a strong brand that, you know, has been somewhat dormant uh, for, for a while. And, um, it, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, my take on this is, again, I'm a little bit more on the idea of wanting to help people out, athletes is, that we can create a, a, a circuit in which guys can get experience and get, get notoriety and stuff with the way that our, our, our uh, television deal is done is, you know, it'll be a, an opportunity for people down the road. It will be able to get on your phones and stuff like that. And so really what it is, is, you know, what we're trying to create is a uh, uh, two levels. One is obviously an international level where we can, you know, send athletes that are going to, you know, you know, you know, let's face it, the, the UFC is the 800-pound gorilla. Nobody's going to knock them off for a while. One is probably the 900-pound gorilla, uh, you know, over there. So we're going to, you know, obviously understand that we'll probably be sending our athletes to them after they get to a certain point. Um, but hopefully we, we, we become that point too. But, you know, I, I understand what we're at. And what really I, want, I see us being is a, a, a resource for these young athletes to get in there and do some stuff. So we're actually going to be doing a lot more than we, we want to do old school pancreas, but we're also going to do, uh, you know, MMA and MMA. We're going to do some kickboxing and some boxing. And uh, really what we're trying to do is put together an entertainment channel under the pancreas brand, because it's interesting because when people don't realize pancreas sent their athletes to compete in all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, Nagasai he fought, uh, he fought one of the Klitschko brothers in a kickboxing match. Some people don't realize they were kickboxers before they were boxing. Wow. Yeah, he fought. He fought uh, one of the Klitschko's in there. Ken Shamrock fought uh, a kickboxing fight. They sent guys. I I fought in the World Full Contact Karate Championships and won it when I was with them. You know, they wanted me to be that. So it's kind of cool in what they do. They call themselves a strong style, and they, they go out there and they'll fight anybody. And that, that was their 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 shtick. And uh, so what we really want to do is we got, we want to be a little bit more organized in it. But we we want to be able to give avenues for people to be able to do some you know be able to launch some careers and be able to get going and make some money and. And, uh, and and create some entertainment. And, um, you know, that's kind of, that, that, that's been my focus on it. I know uh, everybody else's focus is probably to make a ton, a ton of money, which I'm not opposed to. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, but also, too, I've had a blessed life and a blessed career. And, 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 and uh, you know, and I and, and, and I, I, I believe it's my, my responsibility to make sure that I can try to create this for other people, you know, and... Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to be able to really do that. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, I mean, it's like when it's a labor of love, it's not really that much labor. And so, yeah. you know, it's been, a, it's, been a, a, it's been quite, you know, quite, quite the journey. But, you know, this is and what people realize this is the original. We, we went with Mr. Ozaki, who was the original uh, then. And we've, we've made the deal with him for the World Pancrase Create, which is the mother organization for Pancrase. And so we are the the pancreas. Yeah, and so this will be exciting, exciting. Especially like people don't realize, you know, Japan has had such a, a strong history in the sport of MMA. And and when I got over there in the early two thousands, you know, Shudo, pancreas, and Pride, and and pancreas uh, uh, had such a, a big part of of the scene out there of especially bringing up fighters. And and it seems. Uh, it's this will be a really good avenue for people even you know it sounds like they'll have an option if people want to stick their toe in the water and and try not the full-on mma there that they can do the pancreas style or that they'll have an option of both yeah you know what, what i would like to see yeah basically you know old school pancreas you know was more technical sport you know, and I would love to see that come back. What I what, what I we don't want to see is shitty MMA, right? You know what I mean? I I, I would rather see uh you know to be honest, I'd rather see good, without bad, lack of better terms, better real professional wrestlers going at it, doing you know showing a showing a skilled sport than you know shitty MMA because we're gonna right. have MMA. So you know, so we might you know, so we, we want to have that. We we want to have MMA. But you're right. Really, what what, what I hope we did, people will take advantage of this is that they take advantage of the opportunity to develop their skills because that's really what happened with me uh, in Pancrase was you know I developed my skills. You know, like I said, as a, I was a judo player and stuff, and 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 I was 
really good at choking and armbar, but you know, I was still, you know, submission is still secondary to throwing in judo, and so, you know, I wasn't as good as uh, you know the guys that studied jujitsu and the guys that studied, uh, you know, the uh, catch wrestling, and so especially at leg yeah. locks. <laughs> You know, and so from a technical you know, standpoint, I always thought Pancrase was it was my favorite because you really did have so much technique in there. And even, yeah. you know, you even watch guys like, you know, you were a little more polished going in there. But guys like Boss, when he first started, you know, right. I think he had the pink shorts on no ground game at all. And just watching these guys evolve over time, you know, oh, yeah. it Boss was really was, something Boss special. Was, Boss's idea of submission back then was grab a limb and just yank it off. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and then and then he actually learned how to do it correctly so which really sucked but uh, <laughs> but yeah i mean but yeah so that, that's exactly right i mean i would say like boss would be a perfect example of what we want to do you know we want to create champions like that that can skate through whatever with decides to do a submission wrestling match or if he decides to do a kickboxing fight or if he goes to do mma you know he's going to develop those skill sets in what we're doing right but yeah i mean boss he developed his you know he developed in from basically being a kickboxer really what he developed being is a tough street fighting kickboxer into a, a very good technician and uh so that's you know and and, and and you know that's what you need i mean today you know today there's there there, there, there there's so many mma athletes but there's still not that many that have a huge amount of diverse skills, you know, and, and that's, that, that's what happens. And really what happens with most of these guys, and I see it all the time in Dallas, especially, um, is that these guys from d different gyms, you know, uh, and, and I, and I, I still have, you know, I still have four or five athletes I train. It's just that to be honest, I'm also a functional neurologist. And, and after all the brain damage that I've seen, not only on myself, but uh, other athletes and stuff like that, I tend to be a little bit more hesitant about putting my boys in the ring and my girls in the ring uh, the, the same way as I did when I was younger, uh, just because you got to look out for them. Sometimes people aren't smart enough to look out for themselves, so you got to do it for them. Yeah, and, especially uh, when you have a broken hand and you want to fight Tito Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, I, listen, I'll take a broken hand over a broken head any day. So, uh, <laughs> now, you, uh, you run a Lion's Den gym there in Dallas, don't you? Don't you have yeah, a... I run a gym. Okay. Yeah, martial arts, the Lions Den team, yeah. So how, how much different is that with the experience that you have and, and how you used to train and, and now you do see the CTE, uh, the, the brain trauma that happens? How do you, I mean... A lot less sparring. A lot less sparring? A lot less sparring. Yeah, we, you know, uh, you don't need as much sparring. I mean, what you need your sparring for is, uh, you know, is getting your timing down and getting your defense down. You know, that, that's really what it's about. Uh, you know, I see too many guys waste themselves in the gym, even today, you know, the, 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 every time they go to the gym, they, they, they do it. And, and to be honest, God gives you so many punches to the head. And when you hit that limit, you just can't take them anymore. And that's just the truth. And, 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 and in, even though your brain has a capacity of healing itself, it doesn't heal as fast as like, if I break my arm, if I break my arm, well, hell, I'm 52. So it probably takes a little bit longer than eight weeks it used to, <laughs> but you know. But it'll heal a lot quicker than if I take a get a massive concussion, and so you know, so yeah, so there, 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 there you know, I, I really what I've learned is to be smarter in my training. You know, before my training, I wore out my kidneys because my idea of training was uh, I trained till nobody else wanted to train anymore. Mm. You know, it was like I'd wrestle and wrestle or fight and fight until you know there'd be four or five guys, and I'd wear out four or five guys, and they didn't want any more. I'm done. And you can't do it like that anymore. I mean, you know, you, you sh I shouldn't have done it back then, really. But, you know, it, it is what it is, right? So now uh, I have a much more, uh, you know, scientific, you know, back scientific medical look at how we can make our athletes better. And, and, and again, you know, for me, I don't know if it's I've become soft hearted after having children or something, you know, uh, but uh, uh I'm not going to waste your life on a dream that, that, you know, without Russian guys, guys will come in. I want to fight. I said, listen, man, you got to spend some time learning skills. No, I want to fight. I go, you know, I said, to be honest, you're not ready. You know, you, you'll get hurt. And I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm not going to live with that guilt anymore. 
you know. Cause I, cause don't I, you think the Pancrase is the perfect platform now for, for what you're trying to do? Because it is aggressive and you get all that technique and that, that and it's visually one of the most appealing things. I mean, I, I had all the old Jeff Osborne, you know, VHS tapes watching it, right? You know, right? Being, being the OG. But, uh, you know, but it's, you're, you're not getting that smashing them against the cage, smashing their brain. And like you said, you're developing more technique. So I think Pancrase is a, it, perfect for this time and age as well. I, I think so too. I, and and there, there has to be a medium, in my opinion, in which you can develop world-class athletes with a world-class sport. Now, Pancrase is a world-class sport. Let's face it. Look at all the champions that came from Pancrase, right? There's a reason why they can't, the reason why they're champions. Pancrase bred a, a you know championship thought process and and you know, and then and they taught you the skill set and, and and that you needed. And so, you know, so yeah, so you you're right. I, I think it's perfect. Why? Because yeah, it's dangerous. You're still gonna get hurt, right? You know what I mean? Ask, ask Suzuki how well his brain still works to see if he can hear very well after that slap I gave him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that one I don't feel so bad about. But that's <laughs> Yeah, I actually feel bad that I don't feel bad. You know that? <laughs> it's weird. Well, it's, it's weird. good to know that you're not a total angel. <laughs> yeah, I, literally, I, literally, I used to feel guilty for hurting guys, you know, a little bit too much. I'd be like, yeah, shit, I probably shouldn't have done that. You know, him, I'm thinking, man, I wish he stood up a little bit longer so I gave him another one of those, man. Really, man. So he laid down a little too quick. <laughs> so when people come to you for training and, and, and help, I mean, you've got a vast amount of experience. And not only that, with your medical training and your medical team, tell us about what that brings to, to what you've been doing lately with your doctorate. Well, uh, really what it does, it gives me, it gives me a real good insight on uh, mainly the recovery because uh, you know, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest, the, the missing game for most people is recovery. And, um, and, and that's, uh, you know, and so it, what the insight has given me, and we have an amazing, uh, I have an amazing uh, medical director who, um, you know, he is really super sharp when it comes to, uh, it comes to um, certain, uh, you know, things when it comes to food, because he's actually one of those crazy dudes who run those hundred mile races, marathon races and stuff, Wolf. you know? So, yeah. And so that's actually how we got together because, um, you know, I'm a metabolic specialist and, I, and he was getting to be close to 60 and he's like, but I'm like, nah, dude, you got to, you know, I was telling him how he's got to train for the, he's got to do it differently. Right. And, and so we connected at that level, you know, when I started putting him on programs and, you know, the right diet, supplementation, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and he's a super smart guy. And, you know, he really took the reins and started, you know, helping my other athletes, you know, and, uh, and, and so really what, what it gives me an opportunity to do is it, it, it allows me to be able to, you know, be able to give the very best training that I know how to give, give the best recovery. And also, you know, here's the problem is that we are so willing to sacrifice ourselves at this young age. And I, I was one of these guys. I mean, hell, I let a guy break my arm, right? How stupid is that? Right? Um, not very smart. Yeah, not, very, not the smartest thing I could get. Really, uh, you know, um, between that and dating this girl named Renee, they were probably the two stupidest things I ever did. <laughs> But at least one of them was fun, right? Yeah, having my arm broken wasn't as bad as dating Renee. Oh. Yeah, they were both mean. <laughs> she yeah, must have been pretty bad. Broken, I did, once I had my arm broken, I didn't have to keep one eye open when I slept at night. So, oh. but uh, but no, but seriously, and what it allows me to do is just present a better, you know, a, a better opportunity for my guys to go. Because again, your your fight career is going to be a short part of your life. Now, I had a long career. I had 17 years as a professional fighter. I, I turned pro at 20. You know, I retired at 37. And, uh, you know, and I had a long career. Not many guys are going to have those long careers. And, and I had so many fights, it's ridiculous. And it had a lot to do with the fact that I had those fights. I didn't get hit very much. You know, back then I was I was a pretty slick fighter, you know. I didn't really get, start getting hit until I was in my mid-30s. And uh, that's when I, I wasn't such a fast fighter. God has a sense of humor, and it drives me crazy because his sense of humor is like he makes you freaking superhuman, then he takes it away at 36. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> that's you know, life, isn't it? I have no desire to be a mere mortal now, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, man. Give me a break. Especially, yeah, yeah, the life you've tasted. What would you say your top three suggestions to people for 
recovery, longevity, even stuff in general in life, what would you say uh, to help people live a, a more healthy life? Recovery, uh, sleep. The two, the two biggest things that are going to determine your health are going to be your diet and how much and, and how much rest you get, how much recovery you get. Um, it, 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 the, the, it, it, I can bore you the snot out of you, and if you want to, on privately, I can sit here and talk a couple hours on this. If you want to, if you want to do like a tutorial with these guys. But the, the important part that we don't realize, it's it's interesting because doctors, um, most doctors, I mean, obviously, being a naturopathic doctor, you spend a lot more time on nutrition. In fact, you spend tons of it. Um, but MD doctors spend usually about, on the average, three semester hours on it. And it's a shame because it's really what, uh, you know, um, let, let's face it, Hippocrat you know, the Hippocratic Oath is named after uh, Hippocrates, right? Hippocrates is, was a, 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 a Greek um, physician, and he was such a badass, he performed brain surgery like 500 BC. So you might want to listen up to that guy who performed brain surgery, you know, mm -hmm. 500 years before Jesus was born. He probably understands it a little bit better than the rest of us. And he's, and then one of his big things was, is that food is your medicine. And, um, and so modern medicine spends three semester hours on it. And they, they, it's ridiculous. And that's why yeah. one of the, we have the chronic illnesses that we have and stuff is due to the fact that we have shitty diets and shitty stuff like this. And the other one is that we are, uh, you know, to be honest, we're stimulant junkies. And we don't get proper sleep and we don't do stuff. And then, you know, we take medication to wake up. We take medication to go to sleep. And, and all of it's not, uh, it's not good for you. You, you got, you, you, you've got to get your rest. You got to get your, you got to get your nutrition. And if, if you guys do that, every, you know, the world, the world's your oyster, man. I mean, I'm telling you something. It's, it, it is, it is, um, it is so imperative. And I'm not just talking about athletes. It's absolutely imperative for athletes, but. It, it, you know, and, and that's where most people make the mistake when they're athletes or they, they focus on this is that they, they spend their time, sleep, boom, boom. Then when they're done with the fight, let's go party. Yeah. And yeah, I would fight. agree that a lot of the medicine is, it deals mostly with uh, dealing with symptoms instead of the root yeah. problem, instead yeah, of the, the, the preventative ma maintenance. Yeah. And, and also, too, most, most medicines and allopathic medicines, which are pharmaceutical medicines, Allopathic medicines basically take care of uh, the symptoms. There's only a handful of them that actually take care of um, that take care of uh, uh, the actual issue. Right. And like like antibiotics. Antibiotics do kill bacteria. They kill infection in your body and stuff like that. But your body has antibodies. In fact, the, one of the other things Hippocrates says is that the only thing that that, that heals the body is the body itself, which is true. Any any medicine that actually fixes anything mimics something your body does for itself, it just at a higher rate. And so, you know, when, when you have things like sleep and you have things like good food and good exercise and, and the metabolism that's going, you'll fix yourself. I mean, you won't get cancer. You won't. If you do break something, it heals much quicker. And that's, you know, I'll be honest, I, my mom was in the my, my mom was into health food in the 70s when it tastes like shit. And like <laughs> she still made us eat it. And I'm grateful because even though I couldn't trade my my funky peanut butter and jelly sandwich because it was homemade jelly and this funky peanut butter on a wheat bread that nobody could actually stomach, you know, I could never trade it for the bologna sandwich that I really wanted. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is it installed? You were healthier. Uh, yeah, it installed an ethic in me that, that stuck to me, still sticks to me to this day. And, uh, it, it, and to be honest, why at 50, you know, two years old, almost about 53, I, I can perform at the levels that I still do doing some of the stuff, uh, at, you know, uh, on a physical plane. And so, you know, to me, <clears throat> There's not a there's not a freaking hot dog in the world that's worth me, you know, not winning the world championships or not being being around for my children. You know, you know, you know, as, as crazy as my life is, you know, most people didn't think I'd make it to 40. In fact, my mom <laughs> on my 40th birthday, who doesn't drink, actually took a shot of tequila because that's what I drink when I do drink. And she goes, <laughs> baby, we're just glad you made it to 40. So every year I have a birthday. Most people are worried about their birthdays. Me. I figure, man, my next birthday, I'll be 53. I'll be 13 years past my expiration date. I'm doing okay. Congratulations. <laughs> That's well. Right. Every year, every year, they, every year, they, it's a congratulations. You made it one more year. Didn't think you were going to do it, but you did it. Kid. Keep it up. <laughs> so are they going to finally let you into the Mensa group now, at least your family? 
<laughs> I, I think I think I think you've passed the test and you've done enough. You know, I, here here's the thing: is that you can actually kind of go test for it, but I don't want to do that because if I don't pass it, my brothers will never let me live it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what brothers do, right? Yeah. So it's like it's all right. I'll be the athletic one. I'm also going. You know what? I may be the athletic one. I may be the dumb one. But you see how hot my wife is? Not hotter than your wives. <laughs> and that, so, people, I said, is maybe, maybe what's important. Like I get it. <laughs> I said, I'll be dumb. <laughs> Look what I landed. There you uh, go, son. It's actually well, kind of funny, too. Cause, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was always just making jokes because my, you know, my, my, my family's like horribly successful. Uh, you know, uh, I'm kind of like the screw up in the family, but I'm like, I may be still the screw up in the family, but I always go back to, I still got the hottest wife. Sorry. <laughs> well, the thing is like in my family, I'm the screw up, but my brother can still kick my ass. At least you can kick their ass. <laughs> yeah. But you see they're my two younger brothers are twins and uh, they're only 10 months younger than me. And they were actually better wrestlers than I was. Um, everyone knew me because I went to college on wrestling. They didn't want to do that. But the, w by the time I was 14, I was physically gifted. And there was very, to be honest, there were very few male adults who could probably handle me back then. And so, but my brothers knew what to do. Like if I smacked one of them, both of them would jump on me. So I'm pretty much sure. <laughs> so what was sure worse? They, they, they still had that game plan in, in, until just in case I get a little too frisky one night drinking tequila. But um it takes two of them, though. It does. <laughs> and, but here's the point. While, while I'm having my head beat up, beaten against the fireplace, and I'm calling, you're a bunch of wimps for fighting me two on one, I'm still bleeding out of the forehead. So, yeah, uh, you're still losing on the losing. I'm end. still losing in a bad way, you know. And I'm not even able to man shame them into squaring up with me one on one. So, yeah, the funny story, I was getting ready for uh, uh, <laughs> two stories about, about my brother's. But one was uh, they were asking me about in the UFC, the original one, they go, are, you know, were you nervous about fighting in the UFC? And, of course, I was, right? I explained to you about not getting sleep. And, and so I was I, fun. I was like, well, yeah, at first I was. But then I started thinking about putting it in perspective. I said, there I go. My mom raised four boys all on her own. My, my mom's an amazing woman. She did an amazing job. Uh, all my brothers are horribly successful. Like I said, I'm kind of screw up, and I'm doing pretty good. And uh, uh but Friday night she had to work late, so she usually brought home, you know, pizza was usually sent to our house. Nice. And I go, I go, there was always an odd piece of pizza, right? And I go, it was an ultimate fight to see who got that last piece. You know what? So it, was it was a lot more refreshing fighting one guy instead of three. And so like that. So I always tell that joke. But the other one is, is that this is not a joke, but I was getting ready for Suzuki, you know, uh, Fighting him, and he was a really good wrestler, uh, you know, Suzuki Minoru from Pancrase. Real, really, really skilled wrestler and uh, and uh, submission guy. And so, you know, so at the time, most of my training partners didn't have the the, the right skill level, and uh, they, they were decent wrestlers, but not a Suzuki. So, but my brothers were, and so I called them up. I go, guys, I know you haven't trained in ten years, but I mean, wrestled in ten years. I said, but I need your help. So they they came out and they helped me out. Now, I figured I'm wrestling on this. It's going to be a different scene because they were actually better wrestlers than me. My one brother took me down 15 times in a row, and the other one took me down 16 times in a row. And it was I was like, I was all of a sudden I reverted back to when I was 12 years old, and I went into this rage, and I punched a hole in the wall. I was like, fuck! <laughs> like this, and I walk out of the office, and, and none of my training partners ever seen me because I, I don't ever like lose my cool, right? You know, I, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty chill. And... <clears throat> Everyone's freaking out because they're like, never seen me lose. They never seen me lose my shit, let alone punch a hole in the wall. And I'm, I'm in my office and I can hear everything in the other room. And they're like, and I can tell everybody's like real quiet. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. I've never seen guy. Oh my gosh. Is he, someone go talk to him. They're like, no, I'm not going to talk to him. And my little brothers are sitting there going, dude, I knew this was a bad idea. He's such a baby whenever things don't go his way. He always, <laughs> and I'm saying, I'm just getting more and more angry. You know? uh... And I walk out and I'm like sitting there and I'm like going, my teeth are grit, and I'm like, going, I'm sorry for my behavior. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more. And they're like, no, we're going home. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not leaving until I get a fucking takedown. That's it. And if you, slap, <laughs> and if you throw me to takedown, I'll know it. And I'll break your leg with a leg lock. <laughs> so 
Needless to say, it hasn't changed much in the Mesger household. <laughs> well, the beautiful thing, that's what families are for, right? To prepare you for yeah. the world. And it, not only did they prepare you for the world, but for the lion's den and uh, for all that came with it. And uh, well, I'm blessed. I got, I got, I, got I, I have a blessed family. I, I'm blessed with a beautiful family. It's like, I feel guilty because I was, I was probably not the greatest brother, but I certainly had great brothers. I'm blessed. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, guy. Uh, both Jake and I have been looking forward to this conversation, and uh, you're a true OG of the sport, and, and it, great to see how you've evolved. And uh, and and now we got this new uh, promotion, not new promotion, but Pancrase coming to America. It's a rebirth, yeah. It's, it's, it's a resurgence of it. And, and guys, let people know, man, we, we want athletes. We, we want to create this thing. And, and like I said, this is, I think this is such a great opportunity for these younger guys to get in there because, you know, there's not a stepping stone for this, right? Amateur MMA is not really amateur MMA. Right. It's just, you don't get paid and you don't get elbowed. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you know, it's, it's, it's not the same. And I, and, and, and there needs to be a medium for this. And really where I see this going guys is create, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's creating a, just like you create jujitsu tournaments, right? You know, this is like the next level up. You know, this is where the guys that really want to protect, because you know, the problem is jujitsu guys, and I'm probably going to get in trouble with this, they call their matches fights, and they're not. They're wrestling matches, mm -hmm. right? If we counted every one of my fights, you know, where something like that, I mean, I, I did point karate. I literally had at least 2,000 point karate fights. I had 1,000 wrestling matches. I mean, if we, if we put that on my record, I'd be like, Five thousand and you know, right? 50, you'd be you know, you'd be Hicks and Gracie. Losses, <laughs> 17, 50, 1,700 draws. You know, I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, it's like crazy. It shouldn't be like that, right? And so, but this is another level up for guys like that. So I think it's a great level. It, you know, it, 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 I'm not downplaying. It. It's dangerous. I mean, shit, I knocked out so many guys in pancreas. It's ridiculous. You know. Um, you know, but but it is it is something that I think is is, is good for for people to do. I, you know, I appreciate y'all support on this. Um, please have me on again as we get uh, yeah. further along. So we oh, can, you bet. You know, I'll be able to give an information dump on people so that so they understand. You know, they come to our, you know uh, our website, which is uh, 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 you know, pancreashybridwrestling.us.us, um, and find out some stuff. We're, you know, our doc. We have some trailers for the documentary on there. We have some. Uh, and we're going to, uh, the, the, uh, the documentary is, is going to be, a, is, is really, uh, really uh, good. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. We're going to do it in a serious part. We're going to talk about like Carl Gotch. If you all know him, he's, he's really kind of the founder. He actually came up with the name Pancrase. And the Fujiwara Gumi, which was the um, offshoot from pro wrestling that started doing shoots, which shoots a term for uh, real matches. Like they'd have works, which are fake matches and shoots, which are real matches. And it was the first kind of shoot organization into the you know evolution of up into Pancrase, and then the, the heyday there. And then we're going to follow it up with some more. You know, we're we, you know we're going to do is we put them in a you know it's going to be like a three three uh, uh, three uh, episodes uh, three or four episodes on the first one, and then we we, we look to add more. Um, and I think it's important. I, I think when people forget their history, they forget themselves. I mean, that's the problem. I mean, you know, um, the, the reason we're supposed to learn history is so we don't repeat the bad mistakes, but apparently we don't do enough of that. And so, um, ain't that the truth of the world, but it would be nice to sit there and do, be able to create something that I think is, um, an opera, you know, this is, this should be an opportunity for young athletes. If I, if I was coming up, I mean, it, it literally saved my career, it allowed me to fight on a regular basis every six weeks, gave me the skill set, you know, that I needed. And, um, you know, and, and I look at my, my as the most fun of my, my fight career was the Pancrase thing. Now, I will admit it had a lot to do with some of the crazy nights in Rapungi, but hey, by and large. So but that we'll leave that for another day. Well, Guy. Yeah, we, uh, give me another five years, and I think the statute of limitations up on some of the stuff me and Boston. <laughs> so, uh, get... yeah, next time we'll get more of those boss stories. Where can people find you uh, that want to be able to reach you? People want to reach me, they can reach you. Well, you know, to be honest, they can catch me at guymesger.com uh, uh, is, is, is my website for my gym. Um, we're uh, also going to be caught at uh, 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 monsterfitnessclub.com. Um, we're opening a new gym 
uh, big, it's a big 14,000 square foot training facility with uh, Mezger's martial arts in it. Um, we opened that up in January and, um, uh, people in Dallas need to come check it out. It is beyond, beyond freaking cool. Um, we have 3,000 square feet of training space and we have uh, 12,000 square feet of uh, weights and conditioning and oh. all sick stuff. Uh, and again, a big recovery thing. We're having uh, therapeutic lasers. We're having, um, we're actually having medical staff there. Um, so we're doing some and red light therapy. So we got some pretty cool stuff happening. I'm excited nice. about it. Nice. Well, thank you. And uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate your time and uh, appreciate you guys uh, taking the interview for somebody. It's, it's always nice uh, to be remembered, you know, every now and then, you know, you, you get to recapture a little 15 minutes of your fame. And I appreciate you guys letting Dude, me do that today. We, we love the story. Yeah. I, I, I could listen forever. And uh, I'm, I'm, sure a, I'm, a, I'm a huge, yeah, I'm a huge fan as well. Even though I was fighting, I'm a huge fan. But I think you. what what you're doing in the pan race is so, like you said, for young athletes. And you know, I've been coaching my guys, and that's kind of how I uh, changed my training and had longevity. Also, was, was watching you guys and kind of mimicking how you were training and what you were doing. And that's not such a violent approach, like uh, you know, like the old shoot a box or somebody just punching each other's face in. So, yeah. and I appreciate you, and I'm excited for uh, Pancrase to start here in the U.S. Well, you're, you're, you're training athletes. Get hold of Eric and get make sure he has your your contacts so we can get in there and, and, and get some of your athletes going because we're going to create, you know, we're going to create an amateur end of it too, uh, you know, uh, just because, you know, so, so, you know, it just would make sense to. And so, uh, sure. you know, let – let them know. I mean, you know, we like I said, we, we, we want to we want to blow this up. You know, I mean, I would love to see, you know, there needs to be a medium in which these guys can do this stuff. Right. And then, you know, and especially in the amateur pancreas, it's going to be it's kids. Guys have an opportunity to fight. That'll be their UFC because you may be a lawyer or a doctor or you may be an engineer or something like that. And you're not going to have a career in fighting, but you can have an opportunity to fight because as much as I don't like hurting my fellow human being, I'm real capable of it. Cause there's a part of me that's still a savage. There's a part of me that's still, you know, you know, my relatives were the ones jumping over the boats, the Vikings coming in, you know, <laughs> raping, murdering, pillaging. Now I would have probably been a little softer on people. I might've let a few people go, but. Oh, you're a liar. My, my luck, I'd pick the one girl who could actually beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm the only guy climbing back into the boat with no, with no, with no plunder and a black eye because some chick. <laughs> but, you know. You'd, you'd be stealing the chicks while the rest of the guys are dying. <laughs> I would just kid. Like, hey, I know we're raiding your village here, but you're pretty. I like the color of your eyes. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll have to save that. The. the we should have like a, a pod, the Ropungi stories, the Ropungi files. <laughs> Dude, I will tell you something. You should, because I have some stories so funny with boss that it's ridiculous. And people, literally, we have to tone them down because people don't believe the real story. I'm, they're like, they're like, that's bullshit. I'm like, no, it's not. I swear to God. No, yeah, like, especially go. with today's. Sure you did that. And I'm like, no, you got to understand. It's a completely different <laughs> plan over there. It's not like it is over here, you know? And so, but yeah, uh, tales of Rapungi. And what you got to have is you got to have Frank Shamrock, Boss Rutten, me, who else? Uh, Don Fry. I'm sorry? Don Fry. Don, oh. Don, Don's got some good ones too. <laughs> I'm sure you know yeah, that. But like I said, Don's, Don's, Don did climbs over there that there's no statute of limitation over. So you might be able to. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guy, thank you so much, and uh, we will be on the lookout and wait for when this first uh, first uh, match will take place. And uh, check out the documentary. That's going to be, you know, uh, I mean, knock on wood. I just knocked on my desk. <laughs> uh, that we get it out by January. That's that's our goal, and, and really, we're, we're busting ass to get it done so so we can launch the you know the, the, the program in uh, July in uh, January. Well, we'll get you back on the podcast beforehand so you can start promoting this as they come out. Man, that'd be awesome, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. Guy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed Thanks. day. Thanks. See ya. Right, see ya.